Chapter 37 The Blossoms of Paradise Wither Yes, my friend, added Varsity, I heard those words, which appear so destructive of all hope to you, without disappointment, in the same way that now, without pain, and indeed even with joy, I perceive how round about us, here the truth of these words is established in what we see taking place. During Varsity's narration, the process of decay had gone on, slowly but relentlessly, and there could no longer be the least doubt but that all these beings and their surroundings sickened and were fading away to their full and complete dissolution. The lotus flowers had already shed more than half of their crown petals, and the waters only sparkled sparingly forth from between these gay-coloured little vessels, which were set trembling every other instant as a fresh one fell. On their flower thrones, divested of all adornments now, sat the once happy inhabitants of the paradise of the West, in positions more or less indicative of utter breakdown. The head of one hung down upon her breast, that of another sideways on his shoulder, and a shiver as of fever ran through them every time an icy blast shook the already thinning tops of the groves, causing blossoms and leaves to rain to earth. The music of the Gandavas sounded woefully subdued, and more and more frequently was interwoven with painful discords. With it were blended deep sighs and anxious groans. All that had been so luminous, the faces and robes of the Devas and the Gandavas, no less than the clouds and the flowers, all gradually lost brightness, and a blue twilight haze appeared to weave its threads about the distances. The fresh fragrance of the flowers, too, which had formerly been such a vitalizing breath to everything, had gradually become a soporific odour, at once distressing to the body and stupefying to the senses. Carmenita indicated the things about him with a tired movement of the hand. How could you possibly feel pleasure at such a sight, Varsity? For this reason, my friend, she replied, it is possible to feel pleasure at such a sight, that if all this were lasting and did not pass away, there could be nothing higher. But there is something higher, for this does pass, and beyond it there is that which knows neither genesis nor decay. Just this quality is what the Master calls joy in the transient. And for that reason, he says, if you have discerned the ephemeral nature of all created things, then truly you know that which is uncreated. At these confident words, Carmenita's features grew animated, as a flower that is withering for want of water revives beneath a falling rain. Blessings on you, Varsity, for you have given me my liberation. Yes, I feel it. We have erred only in one particular. Our longings did not aim high enough. We desired for ourselves this life in a paradise of flowers, and assuredly flowers must wither in accordance with their nature. The stars, however, are eternal. According to changeless laws, they keep their courses and look their varsity, while all else shows the pale traces of decay, that little river, a tributary of the heavenly Ganga that flows into our lake, its water is just as star-like in its purity and just as plentiful as ever, and all because it comes from the world of stars. One who should succeed in entering into existence again among the gods of the stars would be raised above the sphere of mortality. Why should we not be able to succeed in that? asked Vasati. For I have certainly heard of summoners who fixed heart and mind upon returning to existence in the kingdom of the hundred thousandfold Brahma. And even now it cannot be too late, if the ancient words of the Bhagavad Gita be true. Longings for a future being filling the heart and mind at death, to the life that follows this one will give character and breath. Varsity, you have given me superhuman courage. Come, let us turn our whole hearts to entering again into existence in the kingdom of the hundred thousandfold Brahma. Scarcely had they come to this decision when a violent hurricane swept through the groves and over the lakes. Blossoms and leaves were whirled away in heaps. The beings throned on the lotus flowers cowered before the storm, and moaning pitifully drew their filmy robes ever closer about their trembling limbs. But like one who, all but suffocated in the close and perfume-laden atmosphere of a room, breathes deep and feels themselves renewed when the fresh sea breezes, salt-laden from the floods of the ocean, blow in through the open window, so it was with Carmenita and Varsity when a breath of that absolute purity which they had once inhaled on the shores of the heavenly Ganga, came streaming now towards them. Do you notice anything? asked Varsity. A greeting from the Ganga, said Carmenita, and listen, she calls. As he spoke, the wailing death song of the Gandavas was silenced by the solemn, thundering sounds that they both remembered from their journey long since past. Good that we already know the way, exulted Varsity. Are you still afraid, my friend? 
How could I fear? Come! And like a pair of birds that dash from the nest and fly into the teeth of the wind, so they flew thence towards the heavenly Ganga. All stared after them, amazed that there were still beings there who had the strength and courage necessary for flight. But as they thus breasted the storm, there arose a whirlwind behind them which left everything bereft of leaf and life alike and made an end of the slowly fading domain of Sukhavati. Soon they had reached the forest of palms and soon passed over it. Before them, the silvery expanse of the stream of the universe stretched far away to the blue-black border of the heavens. They swept out over its floods and were instantly caught in the current of air prevailing there and were borne away with the swiftness of the tempest. Overpowered by the speed of their flight and by the frightful crashing that seemed like thunder mingled with the ringing of a myriad bells, their senses finally forsook them. Their mutual life of bliss in the paradise of the West thus drew to its final close. During this time, tens of thousands of years had passed by on earth below.